Hi, my name is Erica, and I worked with my mentor, Hyun, to develop a study based on caregiving and neuroplasticity and looking at that relationship between um, those two with the hormones oxytocin and cortisol. So what were the research questions that kind of guided my um, study? So first, I wanted to know, do children with warmer caregivers show greater neuroplasticity on a learning and memory task? And then secondly, does increasing caregivers' warmth lead to improved neuroplasticity in their children? And lastly, does this relationship between caregiving and warmth and neuroplasticity depend on patterns of oxytocin and cortisol production? So before we get into my study, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. So first, for children, exposure to adversity during critical periods of brain development can be particu particularly hazardous, especially in what are called critical periods. Now, adversity can be defined as any violation in the expected environment. So this can be, you know, atypical experiences or absent experiences. Um, if a child doesn't does or does not undergo a certain experience in a critical period, their behavior can be permanently altered. So basically, adverse experiences can kind of be locked out from affecting development, but it can also equally be locked in. Now, through my research, I found that there were four main caregiving um, types. So that's authoritative, authoritarian, permissive, and neglectful. Now, these four are all based on two dimensions, which is demandingness and responsiveness. Um, however, uh, for my research study, I will kind of be generalizing this to just warm and cold for the sake of simplicity. However, that still does pull from the demandingness and responsiveness scale. Now, what is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to kind of adapt and um, respond to experiences and injuries. Um, and it's particularly high in childhood. So this is why children can learn so much quicker and recover from any brain injuries much quicker than adults could. So now let's get on to what I did for my actual research. So I started with a literature review on PubMed, and then I scoured some other databases that I found just to establish a good foundation to kind of get that background knowledge I just showed you. And then I moved on to my study proposal, which was obviously based off of what I learned on the literature review. And then I kind of added, you know, my own thoughts with my mentor, obviously, who helped a lot um, to really craft a detailed procedure for, you know, what I wanted to do to answer those research questions I posed in the beginning. So let's get on to the actual proposal itself. So first, um, during a laboratory visit, the mother die the mother child dyads will engage in two play activities that are recorded and observationally coded. Um, now this it would be coded for the mother's behaviors. The mother's parenting will then be rated on a scale of cold to warm based on the number of warm or cold caregiving behaviors they exhibit. Um, now, caregiving behaviors will be categorized as having predominantly warm caregiving style if there are greater than 60% um, warm behaviors, and then less than 40% will be cold, and then in the middle will kind of be categorized as a mixed style. Now, studies show that production of oxytocin increases memory skills, um, specifically social memory, while the overproduction of cortisol can result in the impairment of memory-related skills. So the NBAC test task is a visual spatial task with up to six load factors from zero back to five back, and for each item in the sequence, participants will kind of judge whether that item matches the one presented n times ago. Um, then participants, the children, will kind of rate their confidence on each of the responses. And they will undergo, undergo a blood test to measure their oxygen and cortisol levels. Now, the mother will then be oriented after all of this to a two-hour discussion group in which they are kind of taught positive parenting strategies. Um, they will also receive two follow-up telephone calls um, just to kind of reinforce those lessons. And then after a month, the mother child died will come in again to the lab and do the same exact procedure. And then this will give us the opportunity to kind of create different scores, um, which will be created for the caregiving side of each dyad, for the pre and post task oxytocin cortisol levels, um, and the neuroplasticity levels. Now to measure the neuroplasticity levels, 
um, the post map from the baseline visit will be compared to the post map from the follow up visit to see if there are any statistically significant differences in the regions of interest. Now, parallel mediation analysis will also be run, as you can see on the right hand side of this slide, to kind of examine the indirect effect of caregiving styles on levels of neuroplasticity. And that would be done through two mediating mechanisms um, oxytocin levels at time point two and cortisol levels at time point two. And now three covariates will be controlled for in this model to account for any baseline differences. So that includes oxytocin levels at time point one, neuroplasticity at time point one, and cortisol levels at time point one. So I hope this um, presentation was um, interesting and you learned something. Thank you.